everyone, I am Catherine from Bugalina Embroidery Designs and today I want to teach you, if you don't know already, how to make a snap tab key fob embroidery design. Um, they are a lot of fun. Um, they're little in the hoop keychains. Most of them are very easy and quick to stitch. Uh, we will do one without an applique today and then um, this week I will work on another video with um, one with an applique. Uh, my kids absolutely love these. Uh, my friends love them. Family. These are, this is the one we're going to do today. It is an oversized snap tab key fob embroidery design. Um, I'm going to list it as a bag tag because it's larger. It um, goes well on uh, backpacks and sports bags. Uh, here's one I did with my daughter's name for uh, her volleyball and she puts it on her volleyball bag and um, of course I made her like four so she's got them on her backpack and one in her locker so <laughs> she really loves them and um, she wants me to make some for the whole team which I still have to do yet but I did do the coach so at least I'm uh, a little bit uh, started on that. So. Um, take a, let's take a second and talk about fabrics. Uh, you can do them out of so many things. Um, this is marine vinyl. You can order marine vinyl online or um, if you have a Joanne Fabrics. Um, there's no more Hancock Fabrics. So um, let's see, Joanne Fabrics. And I don't know, maybe Walmart carries it sometimes. Um, and sometimes Hobby Lobby, I think, in their big rolls. Um, I have um, been buying a lot of mine online just because I don't like cutting mine down. I love to buy uh, the 9 by 12 pre-cut sheets from some of the other vendors in the embroidery groups. Uh, this one here is made out of mirror glitter canvas vinyl. I don't know if you can see, it's got like a sparkle to it. It's, uh, I love that fabric. It's like my favorite. Um, this one is uh, basketball vinyl. So this one has a totally different texture to it. Uh, looks like um, basketball. So that one is uh, fun. Um, you can also just use regular cotton fabric. If you have heat and bond light, you can iron that on the back of your cotton fabrics and use that. Uh, you can also use, um, I believe it's called Vinyl Fuse. Um, let me grab mine real quick so I can show you what that looks like. Okay, I just ran and grabbed these really quick. This is heat and bond light. When you iron that onto the back of cotton fabrics, it will um, stabilize the fabric, make it a little bit stiffer to work with. Um, this is vinyl fuse. You can iron this onto the front side of your cotton fabrics and it will give your fabrics like a shiny uh, vinyl layer on the top. Um, so I wanted to show you those real quick. So anyway, um, I think we should get started. Um, the first thing I did was hoop a sheet of tearaway stabilizer. Um, I'm using my 4x4 hoop for this demonstration and we're also going to use my single needle baby lock spirit machine. Um, I always hoop my stabilizer so it's nice and tight. Sounds like a drum. Uh, very important. Um, having stabilizer not secured can make your design shift and your end result not as well. I apologize if you hear my kids giggling out in the background. They're having fun playing uh, with those marbles where you build build up the little marble towers and then you put the marbles down and they go all over. Anyway, <laughs> all right, let me uh, position this camera so you can see better. One second. Okay, I've brought the camera closer so you can actually see my screen. I'm going to go ahead and select embroidery and then I'm going to use the symbol for my USB drive which I have plugged into the side. 
I'm going to select my design and I'm going to select embroidery. Now up here it shows you that in this design there are three steps. This is the current step it wants to work on. This is a placement stitch. Um, I'm going to put the placement stitch right onto my stabilizer. Now what this will do for me um, in this case, since I'm working with some scraps of vinyl that might be a little too small, um, it'll help me know exactly where to put my fabric. So we are going to go ahead and load this onto my machine. it onto my machine. Um, I am working with black thread today. Uh, I'm going to do all three steps with black thread. I like to pull a little extra tail when I'm trying to stitch on stabilizer because sometimes my machines are a little finicky with stitching right on my stabilizer. So I'm going to lower my presser foot and press start and cross my fingers that it actually will stitch on the stabilizer. Sometimes it just doesn't like it. Oh, and it's stitching just fine, so I pretty much worried for nothing. Okay, now that it's stitched right on my stabilizer. I'm going to take a piece of vinyl and I'm going to see, oh I have plenty of room. This piece is bigger than I thought it was going to be when I cut it out. So I'm just going to lay that over making sure it's covering um, each edge by at least a half inch or so. And then I am going to take a piece of embroidery tape and I'm just gonna tape down the edges. You could also use a spray adhesive. Uh, that's always very quick and easy. Um, you can do it however you like. Some people use basting stitches but that wouldn't work when you're using a scrap piece because a basting stitch goes all along the outer edge of your hoop and if you're using scrap pieces of fabric you're not going to catch that on all the edges. So I'm just going to go ahead and use some pink embroidery tape which is just like masking tape. So I just put that over the edges and then I'm going to put my hoop back on and I'm going to go ahead and run the second step of the design which is the fill of the snap tab. Forgot to mention what, what I'm working with is um, my favorite the mirror glitter canvas vinyl. So that's stitching out. This, this particular design only takes um, like three minutes total. It is it is so fast. While that's stitching, oops, I hit my uh, my stand here. While that's stitching, I want to take a moment and talk about colors. Have you ever opened an embroidery design and you? wonder what was this digitizer thinking um, it's got a body that's black but then the outline is gray this doesn't make any sense now the reason us digitizers have to do that is when you're making multiples of a design in a hooping and you sort the colors so that it'll stitch out in sequence if we made those colors the exact same color, all of it would blend together. You would never have a place to stop to add your back fabric or do uh, an applique cutout. So 
don't be discouraged when you see all these wacky colors and think we're wacky. It's something we have to do for you. Um, so always, 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 if you can, go look on my website. Look at the sample stitch outs. Look at the colors we use um, as a sample to know, oh yeah, okay, so we don't use that. Oftentimes I'll see newer customers, like when they're making the bugger bands, they'll have, the last two steps should always be the same color and they'll, they'll, cha they'll change their thread between those two colors. And um, I always try to let them know that um, you did a wonderful job, and but to let them know that you're supposed to use the same color. Uh, you, want, you want your end design to match. Um, speaking of bug vines, I will be doing a tutorial of that today as well. So let's go back over to my machine. Okay, sorry for moving around on you, but I wanted to talk about those colors. Okay, so it stitched out the inside of my snap tab design. So next, I need to add back fabric. Now, the back fabric, you can do it many ways. You could just kind of lightly lift your hoop and slide it underneath. And then when you start stitching, it typically will grab it and keep going. Or you can take your hoop out, give it a little spray with adhesive, and then make sure you're covering your whole design and lay that down. In this instance, I'm just going to go ahead and use tape again, make sure I'm covering every part. I like to use vinyl on both sides of my snap tabs. I just, I like the feel, I like the look, uh, it just feels like a quality one. Um, in this instance, I used uh, marine vinyl on the back of this one, which is kind of fun too because it gives it a two-tone look. Um, some people change their bobbin thread color to match the front color. Um, I don't have a good stock of uh, bobbin thread colors right now. I've always just used my white on the back <laughs> and I've never had a customer complain or uh, my children or family or whoever I've gifted them to. Okay, back to the video. Uh, we're gonna go ahead. I taped some vinyl on the back. I'm going to re-hoop my hoop. I am going to Pull a little extra string, I mean thread, <laughs> lower my presser foot and go ahead and press start. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to show you. We are on the third and final step. It shows the final outline. Oh, that little thread was uh, driving me nuts and warning folks do not do that at home always stop your machine before you put your fingers near that needle otherwise you're gonna end up sewing your fingers so I was just a little bit naughty for doing that okay it says oh finish sewing with a little happy face yes we are done that is how fast this particular design is so you can probably crank out a lot of those and they will be popular for boys and girls and adults alike that love basketball um, I have a couple 
stitch, uh, threads I'm going to trim, but I'm just going to go ahead and remove this from my hoop. And I'm going to trim. I love these scissors. I don't know, hopefully you can see them. They are little Kai scissors, K-A-I. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right or not. Um, they have a really super sharp little tip and a little curve to them. And they work amazing for any kind of jump threads. Um, let's say I want to get really close. I will take it upside down and I will just lightly push into my vinyl and trim super close. Like for those pieces you can't like really grip with your finger, like this one I can grip with my finger. I can pull up on it and trim. And look how beautiful that is. I hope you can see it sparkly glory. And there's some on the back too. Okay. And now I'm going to move us over to the other side of my uh, countertop and I'm going to cut it out. Okay, now we're over to my other little countertop. Um, hopefully the glare from that light isn't driving you too crazy. Um, some of the things you're gonna need to do finish your key fob um, and yeah I do I call them a key fob a snap tab a bag tag I have way too many names for these um, I like to use smaller four inch detailed scissors for cutting out mine um, an awl for punching a hole or you can use a leather punch you're going to need some sort of swivel lobster clasp. Um, these are ones I started out with, the round ones. I did move to the D-ring style. I love these way much better. So uh, I have three-fourths inch and one inch. Um, I am really starting to lean towards the three-fourths inch. I, I really am liking the finished look of them the best. I just have to watch my cutting. So I'm going to set those other two aside. You're going to need snaps. This is a Cam Snap brand snap. It has a, a nice shiny plastic. Uh, you can also get them in matte in different patterns and colors. So you need two of those snaps for one snap tab. And you're going to need a stud. Now a stud has a smaller protruding top to it. I'm hoping you can see that. And the socket has more of a recessed inner area. So you'll need one of each because it takes two to make a snap work. Um, you'll need a pair of cam pliers or, uh, or another brand. There are other off-brands um, of these. Uh, I just happen to have been using the cam brand for many years now for sewing. Um, the first thing I like to do is I take a pair of bigger scissors and I just like to what I call my rough cutting. I just try to get some of the excess bulk of fabric out of my way so I can concentrate more on the, my design and what I'm cutting. Okay, um, I like to start off my cutting near the top of my tab and I do this because when we're done that part is going to be on the back so if um, sometimes when you're cutting you can see where you've started and ended so it's just uh, something I like to do so I like to start here I'm pretending there's an invisible line around my snap tab and I'm just trying to stay on that invisible line because I want it to be as even as I can 
and if you'll notice I'm using my left hand to turn so I'm only going up and down with my scissors on the right and I'm turning with my left. This gives you a much cleaner cut. I'm also holding my scissors slightly tilted to the outside and that creates a little bit of an undercut. So when you're looking at my cutout, you don't see stabilizer at all from the front and you don't really see it much from the back either, um, only where I maybe did too much of an undercut. But really, it's it looks fabulous. I mean, this these are gorgeous. They really are. Okay, next step is we need to create holes to put our snaps in. I have always just used an awl, so I'm really used to that, but I did buy a leather punch, so you know what? I think I'm going to grab it real quick, and I'm going to try that so we can uh, experiment together. I'll be right back. So as organized as I am, you might have seen in my other video, I still took me till the third drawer to find it, so sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so I am going to create one hole right about here. Not too low, not too high, in the center near the bottom of my snap tab. Can you see the hole? Okay. And then I'm going to do one more near the top of it. Same concept. Okay, so now I have two holes. And I'm just going to go ahead and slide in. Oh, yeah. Do not throw your snap tabs. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, yeah, that's nice. A little crooked, so I'm actually going to move it a little bit. And I'm just going to push it right through. Okay. So yeah, I was a little crooked. I guess I'll have to experiment more with uh, placement of my leather punch thing. So, oh, but that was really, really easy. And there's also no chance of accidentally stabbing yourself with your awl. So super easy. Okay, so the next step is after I've put my snaps through, I turn it over and I take, I usually put my socket on the bottom one. I, I don't really know what my reasoning is behind that. It's just what I've always done. And it works well, looks well, so hey. Um, then I go ahead and I place my players on it and give it a gentle squeeze. Now you know your snap is on if you see the inner part spread out. That is the the prong of your snap. See the prong? What it does is the players push that down and spread that out. So next we're gonna put our stud on the top. And I think I picked up a little dog hair with that one. Um, we have three big golden retrievers here, and I don't know how their hair ends up all over the house sometimes. Okay, and I'm going to put that one in and give it a squeeze. Now, if you noticed on your pliers, there's like a little cup on the bottom. Just remember that little cup is always to cup the snap. So that's how you always know which way to do it. So 
I'm going to put my snap in my cup. So, okay. I have applied the snaps. I always try to test, especially after having experience with some falling off. I usually try to snap and unsnap at least three times. Okay. That snap is good. It's not going anywhere. I love it. So I'm going to take my little swivel lobster clasp on a D-ring and I'm just going to slide it onto the top, fold it over, and give it a snap. Now, if you do not like snaps, we have many customers in our group that some of them sew them down. They'll do like a little mini zigzag stitch to sew theirs down and make them permanent. Uh, another thing that's really popular is rivets. People like to rivet them. Uh, some people use eyelets. Really, the possibilities are endless and it's your preference. I love snaps because they come in so many fun colors and if you go on certain websites and groups they even sell them with uh, Some of them are embossed, and I even see some like painted ones coming back. Um, I've been using them for many years and used to be able to buy from Cam Snaps ones with uh, decorations right on them. I mean, like, how cool is that? Little guitars. And then there's embossed ones where it's in very hard to see, but this one has, looks like the letter S in it. Um, this one has a little cute choo-choo train embossed in it. I like the painted ones the absolute best because that really pops. So I'm glad to see some of the groups are coming back out with them. Okay, so let's see. Really, how easy was that? Please don't tell me you can't do this. I am here to help. These are very easy. They're a lot of fun. Uh, kids love them. They're a great gift to give people. And I can't figure out how to tighten this new little thing here. Okay, I got it tightened. Um, how fun is this? They're so quick, so easy. I, I just love them. It's one of my favorite kind of designs to make. Um, that and the pencil toppers. Pencil toppers are just a lot of fun too. Uh, I love to see the kids at school get so excited when I bring in, um, like for the first day of fall, I bring in leaves, you know, stuff like that. And St. Patrick's Day, I bring in something and Christmas uh, special occasions. So anyway, um, that is it. That That's all there is to it. I want to thank you for watching this video if you made it through. Uh, if you have any questions for me, please ask in our Bugalina Facebook group. That is our big group where we, uh, we have so many helpful customers and assistants. You know, I think there's like, I have like eight assistants and uh, everybody's super helpful and willing to help. So, uh, Thank you again for uh, joining me, and I hope to see you in the Facebook group. Take care.